Hi guys, today's video is supposed to be completely straightforward, but it's amazing how many videos we start producing and then three weeks later we still don't have definitive answers. However, we now have some pretty definitive answers for you about Jello. So today we're going to take a look at the dreaded camera vibration or Jello, camera wobble issues that happen all too frequently with GoPros or other action cameras. Later in this segment, we examine if some of the rubber vibration mounts actually work as promised and demonstrate how to get the best pictures without all the complicated setups. As for many, if not most people, they just want to plug in their Phantom, get flying and try and get the best pictures available without all the expense and hassles. And our channel videos are largely produced to feature straight out of the box results. Some of the results and topics that we cover in this video may not ring true for everyone and I always welcome feedback or other people's experiences. After spending dozens of hours researching so many theories about Jell-O, I thought I'd present my theory. And remember, it is only my theory, my version of a much discussed topic. Okay, so let's start at the top. We are mainly looking at camera vibration in Jell-O rather than camera wobble or movement in this segment. Okay, so what causes the vibration? At the end of the day, you're throwing a small unit into the air that is no heavier than a basketball and about as aerodynamic as a brick with the downdraft of a small jet hammering your camera and asking it to stay perfectly stable and deliver stunning moving pictures. Well, clearly, that's never going to happen without some help. Even when you see some of the amazing images on the internet from the Phantoms, most of the semi-pros and pros use third-party gimbal rigs, silicon isolation, and then still treat the pictures with image stabilizing software to iron out the bumps and color grade to enhance quality. It's quite a process. Okay, so I'm sure we've all seen this, the dreaded jello. Note the wobble in the center of the picture moving from side to side. What is it? It's mainly caused by the rolling shutter effect, the downside of the modern camera sensors where each frame is recorded not as a single image, but by scanning across each single frame vertically or horizontally, and parts of the image are recorded unevenly when the camera is vibrating or swinging around all over the place. Okay, so what causes it? The actual phantom itself? Not so much as what you might think. If you put a phantom into a hover, you can see here there is no jello and not much wobble. Most of the vibrations are actually introduced from many other factors once in flight. Things like wind conditions, sun, exposures, forward speed, rotor condition, running gear, including your camera weight and hang, the actual camera mounting, the pilot, thermals, and overall weight of the unit. Plus, of course, the actual camera itself and its automatic circuitry going crazy trying to stop what's going on. So the big question is, can you stop it? Yes, you can, but the only way to minimize jello is only if you can completely isolate the camera from the source of vibration and then allow it to sit in a stabilized, cradled environment, which can be a little bit complicated for the average punter. My theory is that the jello starts when the camera and the flying vibrations hit a harmonic resonance. This could be from the rotors, the motors, combined or singly, wind shake or mount vibration. So what we need to do is stop this or mask it as best as possible. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. It's not even so much just stopping vibration, it's really about trying not to generate any more. We have experimented on just about every day imaginable. Rain, shine, wind, you name it. Dozens of mounts, plus I have read literally hundreds of reports and reviews, and even many of the best setup rigs around the country with full fluid isolation still report that each flight can deliver differing results. Nine flights will be perfect, and then the last one will leave you scratching your head. So just when you think you've beaten the dreaded Jell-O monster, it's back. It's just the way it is. And once you accept that as fact, the Jell-O attack gets easier to plan. And again, I reiterate here, this is just for domestic rigs, so please don't give us negative strikes for trying to help normal users get the best pictures they can. Okay, so without trying to bore you too much, we'll just focus on the things that we have found that make the most difference quickly and effectively, and then demonstrate some images from the worst setup phantom you've ever seen, just to show that anything's possible. So here we go. First up, don't fly on a windy day if you want good pictures. It's simple, and always fly with the wind as the pictures will be a whole lot better without the phantom working its butt off trying to fight the conditions. And remember your airspeed could be 10 times faster flying with the wind. Number two, play with your forward speed and find where your Phantom likes to sit. Just like a car, they have a sweet spot, slow, medium or fast, and your height will affect the outcome of this quite significantly. So try it low and high, there will be different speeds for each one, just find that sweet spot. 
Number three, one of the hot topics of conversation is about rototype condition and balancing. And yes, I get it. And yes, it will make a difference, but nowhere near as much as what you might think. And the test will show you demonstrate this time and time and time again. Number four, the more crap you have hanging off your Phantom, the more windage you'll get. It's not rocket science. So for number five, if you're shooting in bright sunny conditions, use an ND4 filter on your GoPro. GoPros have a fixed aperture and can only adjust light levels via electronic means to vary the image exposures. So assuming you have enough light, an ND filter will force the camera to run maximum ISO and a longer electronic shutter speed. The only problem with letting it increase the ISO is that it may also increase a bit of sensor noise, but it will make a significant difference to the rolling shutter effect. And now number six, the all important camera mount. Again, we do not explore third party mounts here, just simple out of the box applications. You need to go one of two ways here with the camera mount. Either fit the little vibration plate with the anti-vibration grommets or lock your mount on tight and direct to the undercarriage. Your results are almost identical. We've spent 20 years taking aerial images from helicopters and if we cannot afford a fully isolated fluid or mechanical mount, the last thing we do is allow any moving parts. The camera is always locked solid to the chopper to minimise vibration. So then you have to wonder why people think that hanging a camera underneath a phantom on cheap moving rubber grommets is going to do anything other than increase wobble and exaggerate windage and even some bounce. That said, if they are fairly heavy duty grommets, then they won't hurt. They won't help a lot, but they won't do any harm. It's a different story when you have weight on grommets and they absorb by compression, but these hang. So all too often, all it will do is exaggerate the movement if you are hanging any kind of weight under a Phantom. The Phantom 2 Vision camera is a little bit different as they have modified the undercarriage bracket to reduce windage, stiffened up the grommets, and the camera is so light that it certainly won't do any harm. Again, I'm not really sure if it helps, but it won't hurt. I think it's actually more about protecting the camera during landings or crashes than anything else. We have done dozens of tests in varying conditions, and here's the results we found. If the camera is allowed to move in any form, you increase the risk of jello. It sets up like a harmonic balance issue at certain speeds and vibration levels, which will result in slight to crazy image jello. And this includes those ridiculous little mounts that come with the Phantom for a GoPro that wobble around all over the place. Okay, so either fit a good quality anti-vibration plate with good quality grommets, or throw it all away and mount the camera directly to the undercarriage with the use of GoPro mounts so that there is absolutely no give in the mount or camera and then put the camera into a sturdy case that again does not wobble around or move easily. I always find it pays to put a piece of felt, material or a silicon pad between the mount and the camera body regardless of what method you choose as this will eliminate more engine vibration than what you think. Even if it's just a piece of cardboard it will make some difference. If you are paranoid about cracks, some might even consider four small drops of silicon to spread the load under the mounting bracket. Okay, to demonstrate how the results come up, we're going to use an old Phantom 1. This is our oldest crash test Phantom with old and chipped blades. They have never ever been balanced and I think only one's ever even been replaced. It has a full set of rotor guards and strings on board to catch maximum wind and the day that we're testing on is far from dead calm for windage. Plus we picked one of the worst subjects a camera can cope with, lots and lots of trees with no real focus point and lots and lots of fine leaves. Oh, and did I mention this is what the unit endured over the last week. So there you have it, we're about to use a unit that has crashed unmercifully several times in the last week and it's going to play host to the camera that's going to test the video pictures for us. Hardly a perfect filming platform. So off we go. Even after all you've seen this Phantom go through, you can see here the hover is still near perfect. There is very little vibration from the unit. As mentioned prior, the vibration comes mainly from the actual flying. Obviously due to time constraints we're only showing one test from each here, but they're all pretty much the same. Okay, so this first pass is with the Phantom Supplied Bracket. It's not that good really. As it heads off into the sun, you can see the reflections of what will become jello. The camera circuitry is largely automatic and when things start going wrong, it doesn't really know what to do. These brackets definitely have too much giving them and move around too much on the undercarriage. 
Okay, so now we get rid of that bracket and we put on the GoPro mount and then we put the actual camera in its waterproof case, which is solid mounted to the undercarriage. You can still see some camera movement from the wind conditions, but much of the jello is now gone. Again, sunlight and wind will play a large factor in what results you get. If you add the ND filter, this will give you quite a bit of control back with the sun. We haven't got an ND on here as we don't need it, but it certainly will make a significant difference. For another little trick, have you ever had one of those days where the vision looks great and then the next day it looks like garbage? Go back and check it. My bet is that you had part of the leg in shot. This seems to be a great little trick if things just aren't working out. Give the camera something to lock onto that is stable and kiss goodbye many of your problems. Sun, jello and wobble issues all seem to go. My theory is that it stops the camera circuitry from hunting all over the place and trying to fix things. It seems to settle down the circuits and stop them getting so crazy. It's kind of happy because it found a solid focal and exposure point. But you don't want the leg in shot, I hear you say. Well that's simple, just slightly zoom it up in your edit software, or if you're using image stabilising software you don't need to do anything, as it will take it out automatically for you as part of the process. It's simple and it's basic, but it seems to be a great little trick. It's worked for us pretty much 100% of the time, so we'd be grateful for anyone's feedback about what your experience is as well. You can use this solid mounting method to mount a compact camera as well, but in our experience the compact cameras are very sensitive to rolling shutter over the action cams and it's hard to get them sorted. If anyone finds a good one please let us know. We have a little video following about mounting compact cameras with simple brackets. We also suspect that the downdraft from the rotors creates turbulence that upsets the camera as well and we have designed a simple clip-in wind deflector that is under test at the moment. So email us if you want to know more, but we will probably do a feature on this soon anyway. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell guys. Don't get too caught up in the actual unit. Fly with the wind, play with your forward speed to find the sweet spot. Make sure your mounting is stable regardless of what mounting method you use. Add a vibration buffer zone under the mount, whether it be felt, silicon or cardboard. Use an ND filter for less rolling shutter effect. And don't be afraid to show a bit of leg if you need to settle things down. And most of all, just remember that some days you're going to eat jello, no matter what you do. So please check out our website for other tips, tricks and techniques, and we hope that helps a bit. Happy flying.